Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. It is 4.30 p.m. We're doing this one in the afternoon. It is Monday, September 2nd, and I'm going to do an initial kind of picks video. We're going to go through position by position and look at week one of the NFL season. My God, that sounds incredible. Week one of the NFL season is here. Lots of content coming out on this channel. Very excited to be appearing on Awesomeo's strategy shows on a Tuesday, Thursday schedule at 11 a.m. right now. You can find me there. But I'm excited. Let's to get into this slate. I'm going to go position by position. A couple things to quickly call out. You can see right above me is the Drafters logo. Uh, Drafters is going to be sponsoring this video. I'm very excited for them to be a sponsored partner during the NFL season. Check out Drafters. It's a different site to play on. You don't have to worry about all the pros over there. You don't have to worry about the rake. And it's a different format. Um, it's not just salary based like you're going to get on DraftKings, FanDuel, Fantasy Draft, all these other sites that it's fun to play on. But it's a nice refreshing format where you can have a rank them over on Drafters where you just rank your top quarterback plays of the week in a specific order. So similar to like a, a, a captain mode for a DraftKings, you have your top top player who's going to get that X amount of points and then so on and so forth. And they also have just a format where you go in and you draft in smaller leagues and you have a, a weak draft for that season. It's not salary cap based, so it's a different, nice, refreshing format to get into. That is draft. There's great guys over there. They've been partners, been backing this channel and been backing me for a while. So go over there, check it out. I'll link it down below and there'll be a, a promotional uh, link as well down below so you can check that out uh, nice way to start off the nfl season and i'm sure they'll have some sorts of promotions that i'll link down below uh, as the week goes on and the season goes on so that's drafters check them out also down below before we get into it you'll find free strategy guides my nfl daily fantasy course and my exclusive content on patreon if you're interested in my tiers and rankings if you're interested in some uh, patreon exclusive live streams uh, and articles in that matter so that's it everything's down below we got the housekeeping for week one out of the way we're about to hit we probably will hit by the time you see this 7,000 subscribers thank you all so much if you appreciate this video and you get any value from it please join the community you joining the community helps me out a ton helps me grow this channel I, this is my first ever video on the new webcam that just came in from logitech this is great uh so let's get into it we're gonna go position by position again it's monday uh, on friday i'll do a final thoughts video and again i have videos out for all week long so this is the target offense sheet this is something as a patreon you will get as a downloadable version uh and it covers a lot of things pace how many plays are being ran in the game that's obviously uh, going to be very important and projecting pace is something that i do week in and week out vegas totals and then the DraftKings points per games this is looking back at last season because what do you expect me to do be houdini and predict this season we got to use last season's data and i understand that there's going to be defenses changing lots of players switching teams retiring age is going to be a factor for a lot of defenders so these numbers should change uh, for sure but they're at least a nice baseline to be looking at uh, because teams aren't going to flip the switch not every single one of them from being bad to good in just one year so with that said you can take a look at this you can screenshot it if you need to I'm not really going to go over it in any detail right now i will be going live before lock on thursday i'll be going live before sunday and any monday night games we can kind of look deeper into it then and have a discussion but with that said Let's break it down. These set stat sheets, which you can see, they're going to keep going and adding more stats. These are all available on Patreon with my notes as well. Um, so we're just going to start off this week right now. And final thoughts, I'm going to trim down this pool like a more focused player pool on the Friday video. But getting into it right now, make sure to follow me on Twitter at DFS for any updates on these lists. Uh, a couple of players that stand out to me, and there's going to be a good amount. Y in green right there, that clearly means yes, that I'm interested. X is going to be a maybe I want to see later in the week. And then N, I just have no interest as of right now. Players that are standing out out of my wise. There's five guys here, and I'll point to a couple of them. Uh, Carson Wentz right now has a sneaky total, which I imagine as the week goes on and more and more content comes out, people are going to gravitate towards him. He's $5,700. I mean, this is one of the best value plays that you're going to find at the quarterback position. Clearly, we have guys in the 4K range that I'm honestly not too interested in. Um, and then you get guys in the 5K range where there's a couple of good ones. Uh, and another one that we'll talk about that I'm kind of questionable on in Kirk Cousins. But Carson Wentz at 5,700 with a team total of the second highest behind the Kansas City Chiefs, the best offense in the league, at least last year, 27.25. One stands out as a guy that's going to make a lot of sense. They cut some of the running backs back there in Josh Adams, Wendell Smallwood. They kept a very solid group of running backs, in my opinion, that are all have one thing in common, good pass catching abilities between Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Corey Clement, and then Darren Sproles. Uh, you obviously have Zach Ertz continuing to come back. You have Dallas Goddard, where they're going to be going more two tight end sets. Carson Wentz right now in this total, uh, with the matchup that they'll have against Washington, which secondary to the second half of last year was awful. I uh, get, gaining Haha -ha Clinton Dix last year. I wonder if that made anything happen. Uh, a former Packer. I'm a Packers fan. Uh, very underratedly bad in this league. Um, but yeah, it, it should be a matchup that's going to stand out. Wentz, the mobility is probably not as much there. I love mobile quarterbacks and getting a piece of them. 
Probably not as much there, uh, but at 5,700, it's hard to ignore. A guy who is mobile right there in the same price range, $5,900 Dak Prescott, who made my first look lineup. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. I love Dak Prescott this week. The total is great, 26 and a half. 26 and a half for this slate is in the top four. I believe it's, yeah, it's, it's number four right now. Against the Giants, who on both sides of the ball are going to be very questionable, at least to start the year on offense, as long as Eli's at the helm with all their receiver injuries. Saquon Barkley on offense is really their only uh, standpoint that they can kind of get solid confidence behind. But then you look at the back end of that, and you look at the defense, and there's not much left over there, right? Landon Collins has been shipped out. Not much left going on. I like Dak Prescott a lot. Not only has he shredded the preseason, not only does he have now Michael Gallup in another year, Zeke, I imagine Zeke will be back by week one. If not, Tony Pollard is fine for a one-week replacement. A guy who can catch the ball, uh, continue to put pressure on a defense uh, up the middle on the outside in terms of running ball. Uh, Dak Prescott just stands out. Amari Cooper, we'll see what he's doing with his uh, ankle injury. Jason Witten is now back in this offense. Blake Jarwin, they have depth. I'm very excited. I imagine they run more and more options with Dak Prescott um, as this passing game gets even better just to add in some uh, deception. Prescott is somebody I'm high on in season-long leagues. I'm high on in week one because $5,900 for a guy who has rushing upside in the 20 to 30 rushing yard range, right? We know that that's important in fantasy. I'm high on Dak Prescott. And then the guys at the top that I think uh, I might not get to as much at the high price points, but if their ownership starts to come in low, depending on the site you use, I will most likely be using uh, Awesomo's ownership or fan share. We'll see. Uh, usually cross-reference. Jameis Winston at 6,600. Baker Mayfield at 64. Now, Mayfield's team total slightly higher than Winston's at 25 and a half compared to 25. I do think that I will get to some of these players. And then getting to Jameis just makes so much sense. I mean, they're stacked. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard just in the receiving game. Uh, to name a few guys, losing Adam Humphreys is a little bit of a hit, but that allows, and Deshaun Jackson, that allows Godwin to just be an absolute monster out there. Cameron Braid is still there. This team is going to be absolutely dynamite. Still don't have a rushing game, or at least don't have much of a running game. Um, with Peyton Barber, with Ronald Jones, there, Ogon Bawale, all three of those guys, Ogon Bawale, the rookie none of them really breaking away or standing out in terms of making this team run the ball more it's going to be all systems go in the passing game uh, winston's going to be passing a lot probably has interceptions but in dfs interceptions as long as you're not getting pulled like he was last year really don't matter too much a guy who seems sneaky to me is jared goff a guy with a 26.75 team implied total third highest in the slate a guy who played in a very fast offense last year and i'm projecting this game to be the fastest pace game on the entire slate between them and carolina based on last year's pace statistics um yeah jared goff again the offense is great none of them played in the preseason none of the wide receivers none of the running backs outside of daryl henderson jr the backup running back or maybe even third string the rookie that they drafted in the third round jared goff with all the weapons at his disposal um it, it seems like a spot where with the pace with the total and with the offense it should be completely fine for him to do whatever he wants and i imagine in this weird range of 6200 where he's not cheap and he's not expensive he's going to be a guy who stands out um pretty easily in my opinion uh as a a potential high scorer with that low ownership other guys to kind of go through and talk about. So one that I want to talk about that I kind of have question marks on, and maybe two, um, Nick Foles is one against Kansas City. If this Kansas City game becomes a shootout, Nick Foles, who has been very serviceable and obviously very no, uh, known the past couple of years getting the Super Bowl in Philadelphia, uh, Nick Foles stands out as a guy who, against the Chiefs in such a high total game, the Chiefs with a 28 implied team total, Nick Foles with 24 and a half for his team, looked like he had a connection with D.D. Westbrook in the preseason. That car just opened it up. Uh, looked like he had a connection in camp with Chris Conley. You still have Leonard Fournette, who's going to get more of a pass-catching role here. I think this game has the opportunity, and Vegas is predicting it with only a three-and-a-half-point favorite for Kansas City, to be a shootout. And if that's the case, Nick Foles on the opposite end at very low ownership compared to what I imagine is Patty Mahomes getting high ownership from a lot of casuals, stands out as a guy that I really want to target. Going down a little bit more here, um, Lamar Jackson, $6,000. This is probably not the week I get to him. Team total of 21.25 is worrisome. Maybe not really worrisome with his rushing upside, the ability to add four to five points on the ground uh, pretty easily. Uh, but then the pace here is not something great against Miami, although Adam Gaze is now out of there. I don't imagine the pace picks up all that much. Baltimore, again, another slower paced team on their own end, running the ball a lot. Lamar Jackson, this probably isn't the week. In season long leagues, I love him. Uh, moving forward, I love him a lot. But there's just guys that are cheaper, i.e. Carson Wentz, i.e. Dak Prescott, that I think have more upside in their respective matchups, predicted by Vegas, predicted by Pace, just offensive weapons behind them, uh, and even the price points. 
Jacoby Brissett, somebody to talk about. $4,400, I don't have interest. They just signed Brian Hoyer to a three-year deal. It seems like Chad Kelly, who's suspended right now, just, they just said, we don't care about you. Uh, they signed Brian Hoyer to a three-year deal. And Hoyer is a pretty serviceable backup slash, I guess, starter at some points in this league. Brissett's going to be the guy that they give the keys to to start. Uh, I don't have much faith in Brissett against the Chargers. There are Derwin James on the IR, so there's that to mention. But just no real interest in Brissett overall um, against the Chargers at 4,400. I get it. It's a nice cash play if you want to fit in other guys. Uh, he does have the ability to put up points in this offense still. I'm just not going to be testing it against a very good defense week one. Um, Patty Mahomes is somebody that I should talk about. I'm probably not going to get there just due to price. I don't think it's the week that you have to force him in. It's very easy to, I guess maybe force him in is a bad word. It's very easy to be getting to Patty Mahomes at only $7,200. Um, when you only 72, it's an expensive price point, but when you kind of factor in that he's going to be going up, uh, in a, in a week one where you can get any running back or wide receiver or tight end you want and easily fit him in with the highest total on the slate team total. It's somebody that I probably grow more interest in later in the week, depending on his ownership. But you have a lot of cheap quarterbacks who have similar upside, probably not the same ceiling as Patrick Mahomes, but in terms of median projections, uh, similar to him uh, when you factor in that they're going to be $2,000 or $1,500 less. Uh, I'm not going to kind of hit on every quarterback just for the sake of this video's length. Um, but let's move on to running backs. Again, you can see there's a lot of interest here. I'll pick out a few. You can look at them. Some notes have already been put in. If you want to get access to these stat sheets, Patreon is linked down below as well as my daily fantasy course. Zeke, I have all the interest in the world. So the top end backs, Zeke and Saquon are guys that have a lot of interest in. If Zeke is indeed playing, I will have more interest in Zeke than Saquon this week, slightly, as of right now, just due to the fact that I think Zeke's offense is better, indicated by a 26 and a half in, uh, in implied team total for this game compared to Saquon and the Giants 19 and a half. So just more touchdown and goal line upside for Ezekiel Elliott is a big factor factor there when he's only $200 more if indeed he plays again we don't know right now what's happening it seems like things are good then the next second it seems like things are bad so keep an eye on that if Zeke is out it makes it pretty obvious for me that Saquon Barkley is the only top end guy I probably get to Christian McCaffrey is somewhat interesting to me um, especially against the Ram who struggled against pass catching backs last year um, and indeed will have a better overall team total and probably game environment with the Carolina offense in that game that's going to be very high pace, which is good for McCaffrey. I'm just very worried with, by the fact that they're already taking away goal line work. They've already said that they will take a low, uh, away a lot of his work in general. So week one, I'd rather pay $200 more for Barkley, who I know is going to see 20 plus to 25 touches. Even if his team's down by two scores, he'll still be on the field for all three downs because he's such an elite pass catcher and probably their best wide receiver, him and Evan Ingram, who's a tight end. Uh, as of right now, it's Sterling Shepard probably going to miss. Leonard Fournette, $6,100. This 6 k or 5,500 to 6 k range is just ridiculously valuable, ridiculous in terms of the running backs you can get to. Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, and Chris Carson, three of the best running back plays, if not the three best running back plays due to price on the entire slate. They're all going to get 15, oh, 15 to low end, 18 plus touches. They're all going to have pass catching work. Leonard Fournette is going to be the guy who probably gets the lowest ownership unless people start hyping him up like myself. He has by far um, just... The same, if not higher ceiling than these other guys in Dalvin Cook and Chris Carson. Dalvin Cook's going to be well too overowned because people think that Atlanta is just the worst in the league at defending the running back position. They were the fourth worst last year. Uh, Deion Jones being out was a big part of that. Jones coming back is going to help that. The defense is a little bit revamped. So I think they're still going to be bad, but nowhere near as bad as last year. Too many people are going to overweight how bad that team was last year. I still think it's a fantastic spot for Cook. I just think relative to his ownership at the exact same pivot price point as a Leonard Fournette, I love Fournette here. I mean, how don't you? 24 and a half total. They're facing the Chiefs who gave up um, more points last year to the running back position than Atlanta did. The Chiefs gave up the third most fantasy points last year to the running back position, 30.9 DK points per game compared to Atlanta, which was 30. So very close, but still. Uh, and then Leonard Fournette. Alfred Blue is now on IR and the only guys behind him are two rookies, Reichel Armstrong, who Jacksonville took, and Devin Ozigbo, who the Saints had and they dropped and now Jacksonville picked him up due to the fact that Blue's on IR. So you get Leonard Fournette, you get two rookies, and you get a fullback on this roster in the backfield. Fournette, they already said, is going to be the three-down back. He was put into uh, this offense, and he just absolutely started flourishing in the preseason uh, and really mainly camp. And he kind of already said and came out and said, I secluded myself for a month. He went to some deserted island for a month and just worked out, and he said he's in the best shape of his life. Give me Leonard Fournette, and like I said on Twitter, his Mortal Kombat stiff arm all day at 6,100 against the Chiefs. I love it. The fact that Blue's on IR, he's going to be on the field for almost every single, if not every single offensive snap. Um, and as long as he stays healthy, he's going to smash this year in season long. I love him. I love the Dalvin Cook range against Atlanta, although I, I think it's going to be over-owned. I think for, for the most part, it's fine to get to, especially since ownership in the NFL does not matter nearly as much as NBA, does not matter nearly as much as um, MLB, just due to the fact that there's so many more positions and so many more players than those sports. You're just going to have, in general, 
every single week at least 50 to 60 wide receivers in play that you can get to and feel maybe not the most confident in, but they're at least in play. Same thing for running backs. You're going to have like 20 to 25. That alone, um, the wide receivers is going to be more than other sports players in play. Guys who are going to be question marks for me, Austin Eckler, he probably starts to move into a guy that I want to play. Just once we get news that Melvin Gordon is indeed going to miss, I'm going to be jumping up Austin Eckler, who will be a borderline RB1 and a 5,500. It just makes this range even more better. Uh, Devin Singletary is a question mark at only 3,600. The only reason he makes this list for week one, I do have a lot of belief in Devin Singletary long term this year for DFS and also season long best ball leagues, all that. With the um, reduction in the cut of LaShawn McCoy, I don't believe Frank Gore, 36 years old in Buffalo, where he sustained his career the last years in Miami, Indiana Dome, and San Fran, very favorable weather situations. Now he's moving to Buffalo, where your body's just going to be so stressed from the cold at that age. Um, and just in general, I don't think he sees a lot of the work. Uh, week one, though, I don't think it's his time to kind of take a stab on Singletary, although the price point of 3600 for a GPP at least keeps him in play, in my opinion. Uh, Damian Williams was a question mark. Now with the news coming out that McCoy and him are both considered starters by Andy Reid, we'll see what they do here. Last time they ran 23.7 running uh, rushing attempts per game. You factor in that both Damian Williams and McCoy will see work, and potentially even Darwin Thompson maybe sees two to three touches a game. So you're splitting up 20 touches there because we don't think the Chiefs are going to run more. Like I think we can confidently say they won't run more than 23.7 times in that offense a game. But um, I do believe that Damian Williams and McCoy are going to split up 20 carries. I don't think that that means Damian Williams can be in play at 6,300, especially when we factor in that you have Dalvin Cook, Chris Carson, Leonard Fournette, um, Austin Eckler, all these guys in the exact same range for the cheap. Lots of other guys that I have on here. David Johnson against Detroit. I'm very concerned for this Arizona offense. I like. I know that everybody's all hyped on them. They're going to play faster. But they're facing Detroit in week one, which is a very slow-paced team last year. I have this projected as the slowest pace in terms of 114 total plays. By far the slowest pace by over two plays uh, on the slate is what I'm projecting this at. That's worrisome for David Johnson and a running back. You have the fact that the slow pace, Detroit is probably going to hammer the rock against a very bad Arizona Cardinals rush defense. Um, and really didn't do anything this offseason off to curve that. We saw that in the preseason. It looked terrible. It worries me for David Johnson this week in the overall offense at that price point. There's just so many value plays that you can get to. Kenyon Drake seems to be good for week one. The matchup against Baltimore, I have interest at 4,700, but the matchup against Baltimore is terrible. The pass catching upside helps a little bit. Kalen Balaj, I do not believe he's going to be, he'll be on there for maybe 25% of the snaps in terms of this RBBC running back by committee. Uh, but Kenyon Drake, He's going to be very low owned, if not virtually unowned. And the price point is the main reason why he jumps into an interest of mine. I hate the matchup. I like the fact that people will be off of him because he was injured and really maybe people don't even know he's going to play week one. $4,700 is very cheap. Might not pull the trigger this week, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, that's really it. Devonte Freeman, uh, Devonte Freeman at 5,300 against Minnesota. It's a very difficult matchup. The team total for Atlanta is very surprisingly low, but mainly due to the matchup, 21.75. Last year, Minnesota was one of the teams that gave up the least fantasy points, bottom six in the league, 22.5 per game to the running back position. Freeman is a guy who I'm very high on this season, but again, he's cheap, which is good. But in this range where you have Carson, you have Ecular, Cook, and Fournette, uh, within $800 or even some of them within $200, $300. I'd much rather get to them this week in better matchups and better game environments for pace. Um, and just overall, what, what, I would, uh, what I would expect to be more favorable spots. So that's where I'm going. I think Zeke and Saquon are in play. If Zeke is indeed going to be playing, he, I do get him at 9,200. The whole field uh, situation here is going to be, let's get to this guy. Let's get to that guy on the, on the low end. It's going to leave lineups that have Zeke and Saquon both starting in it. If indeed Zeke plays or Saquon and McCaffrey, two top end running backs, there's going to be very few that do that, play both of them. Now they probably still become chalky because people will pair two with two cheap guys with the one expensive running back in terms of lineup construction. Uh, but in general, uh, the two high-end running back price plays is probably going to be contrarian. It's going to be something I look at. But I love the Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Chris Carson range. And Austin Eckler is going to grow on me during the week. Wide receivers. If you watch in the preseason, you know that I'm going to have unlimited wide receiver interests. It's just so many. We'll have a final thoughts on this on Friday. It's hard, right? You have 24 teams playing on this slate, and each of them is going to have two starting wide receivers. It's very difficult to kind of try and pare that down. I'm targeting specific offenses and specific spots and obviously price ranges. A couple things to point out. The top end wide receivers are probably going to be low owned. Um, in my opinion, uh, you probably get a couple of guys jumping on the Mike Evans. You probably get guys jumping on Odell in terms of ownership because you can pay down at running back and you can pay up at running back pairing one uh, expensive running back with two lower end guys paying up for whatever you want at quarterback and tight end. And then you probably see um, just ownership being distributed um, 
sort of not too much on the top at wide receiver and I imagine a lot in the middle to the low end because again there's a lot of cheap guys there I think Mike Evans is a fantastic play against San Francisco I think his running mate Chris Goblin former uh, Penn State wide receiver he's going to take a huge leap forward this year was on the field for all of Tampa Bay's snaps in the preseason with Jameis Winston ran a route out of the slot on about two-thirds of those snaps he looks the part 6200 for Godwin is one of the best plays in the slate he's been one of the most hyped up players this offseason you can imagine he'll probably be one of if not the highest owned wide receiver at that price point and the matchup is very very good 25 implied team total a 131 uh, 131 plays in projecting for this game which is top three on the slate a couple other guys that stand out because I don't want to go over every single one but Tyler Lockett they just signed Jerome Brown after they cut him to Seahawks, but Lockett's still going to be the number one guy. He's going to run out of the slot a ton. He'll be taking over that Doug Baldwin role that was so, so effective for Russell Wilson and the Seahawks. Tyler Lockett, I imagine, gets some run on the outside, but for the most part will be in the slot. Now, I don't think the pace in this game will be good, but that really has never mattered with Seattle too much, a team that runs the ball a lot and is very efficient at the quarterback position with Russell Wilson. 26.5 implied Vegas total for a game that probably has a slow pace just shows you how efficient this offense is. Uh, Tyler Lockett is going to be the number one receiver in this offense this year. Him moving into the slot is going to increase his efficiency. He could utilize more of the field, uh, be facing the, the opposing team's number three or four cornerback in the slot. I like Tyler Lockett a lot at $6,000. This price range of $6,000 and high fives is just going to stand out in terms of similar to the running backs, just being a valuable range where everybody at least should be hovering to. Tyler Boyd, another name on the opposite side of this game, $5,800. The team total here is 16 and a half. Disgusting. Uh, I believe the lowest on the slate. But Tyler Boyd, a guy who I don't really have that much faith in as being like a number one wide receiver, a true number one with AJ Green down. We saw it last year that he struggled, but in the preseason, he was running a snap on every single play, was in the slot a ton a spot where he thrived with A.J. Green um, being out there. Then they moved him to the outside quite a bit, and he struggled. But him being in the slot a ton, if you're going to tell me at 5,800, I'm getting 10 targets out of Tyler Boyd, it might be worth the risk in week one against a good defense um, or a, an average defense. But when you're running a talented wide receiver out of the slot, it kind of neutralizes that. Uh, the, the implied total is worrisome um, for this team at 16 and a half. The pace is worrisome. But the fact that you just want volume here, right? You want to get a lot of targets. If you can lock in 10 targets out of a wide receiver at 5,800, it's going to be hard to ignore in my opinion. Keenan Allen at 73 is probably the guy I pay up for the most, honestly, against Indiana uh, or Indianapolis. 25.5 team implied in total. It's going to be a good overall spread here. You get Philip uh, Rivers with a full arsenal of weapons. He lost Tyrell Williams, but Hunter Henry is back. This offense should move fine. He's a PPR machine, Keenan Allen, which is obviously drafts game scoring format. Um, I'm very high on Keenan Allen for week one, 7,300. I hope he is a guy who gets overlooked and goes a little bit lower on. D.D. Westbrook, 4,800, too cheap. The man had so many targets from Nick Foles in week three of the preseason. It looks like they're going to have a very good rapport. But I want to tell you one guy who's a very cheap, Chris Conley, 3,100 against Kansas City. We already talked about how good of a spot this is for Jacksonville's offense overall in a potential shootout. Chris Conley is only 3,100. Nobody's going to own him. Everybody wants to hop on 4,800 D.D. Westbrook for good reason, right? He got all the looks. He seemed to have a rapport. Um, he ran a route out of the slot on almost every single snap in that Jacksonville week three preseason game. But Chris Conley was a guy that Nick Foles was throwing bomb touchdown passes to in practice. I don't know if you want to pull this trigger. Definitely not in cash. But in GPPs, keep an eye on Chris Conley, a guy who should be on the field. He was on the field for the most snaps in that game. About three or four more snaps than D.D. Westbrook. Um, he's going to have all the opportunity in the world in terms of snap percentage. It's just a matter of, does he get more looks? I think a lot of people are going to overreact to D.D. Westbrook's role. In the slot, it makes a lot of sense. You should want to get there, especially in cash. But in GPPs, I'm looking at Chris Conley as a very low-owned, um, high upside play on the outside for Jacksonville. Has a very good rapport in the preseason and also mainly in camp with quarterback Nick Foles in Jacksonville. Curtis Samuel, 4,200. He's cheaper than his running mate, DJ Moore, out there in Carolina. He's the number one wide receiver is what all the reports out of preseason were saying. He's getting lots of hype in the preseason. 4,200 is too cheap to ignore in a very high-paced game with a decent implied total of 23.75. I like Curtis Samuel a lot this week. Right there in the price points next to him, $4,000 out of Humphreys, $4,300 Michael Gallup. Keep an eye on Amari Cooper's status. If he is out, I probably like Michael Gallup less. I don't want Michael Gallup being the number one wide receiver. I don't think he can kind of withstand that kind of coverage from defenses. If indeed Amari Cooper is in, you're going to get a lighter load on Michael Gallup. I like him even more at $4,300. Cole Beasley and Adam Humphreys are very comparable players. They're both on a new team. They both saw a lot of targets from their quarterbacks the weeks that they played in the preseason. $4,000 for Adam Humphreys, $3,600 for Cole Beasley. Both of these teams, though, terrible implied team totals. 20 for Adam Humphreys in Tennessee, 18.25 for Cole Beasley in Buffalo. 
I don't really want to get some in week one. You're relying mainly on Cole Beasley to get a lot of targets and a lot of short catches. He's very good inside the red zone, believe it or not, Cole Beasley in his career. Um, but I'm not probably going to play with that. 3600 is a good price point, maybe for cash. Don't think there's tournament upside. Adam Humphreys, though, is a guy who runs more intermediate routes. Beasley will mainly stick to the shorter to kind of intermediate, where Humphreys will go mainly intermediate, potentially some deep. He'll get the short crossing routes out of the slot. Both of these guys being slot receivers is a key um, as to why I have any interest at all. But $4,000 for Adam Humphreys, who I believe is just more of a downfield threat, not the biggest compared to outside receivers, but between him and Beasley, I'd rather pay up there if you're deciding. Damian Willis at $3,000 flat. Keep an eye on Damian Willis, similar to Chris Conley. I like Chris Conley way more. He's in a better overall game situation. Damian Willis, teammate, we already talked about Tyler Boyd. Low implied total here for the Bengals. 16.5 is disgusting. Slow pace. $3,000 flat though. He's a starting wide receiver. He'll be starting for AJ Green. He impressed in the preseason. Not a guy that I have much interest in, but I'm just informing you on a very cheap upside play today. Um, the only other guy in this offense... Um, or not this offense, the only other guy in the 3K range that I really want to hype up at all would be Chris Conley. And he's a guy that I have a lot of interest in, believe it or not, at 3,100. Should be playing probably the most snaps at the wide receiver position for Jacksonville on the outside against the Kansas City weak defense who gave up 38 fantasy points per game to the wide receiver last year, below average or above average in terms of being a good spot for a wide receiver. Other names on there, I'm not going to get to all of them though, clearly not. Uh, if you want more Patreon, I'll have my tiers updated. Lastly, the tight end position. So... Tight end position, I have a couple of interests. It's not that many. OJ Howard, Evan Ingram, Hunter Henry, and Delaney Walker. And then obviously Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. Two of the three, I believe the two best tight ends for fantasy in the league. I think Zach Ertz takes a step back with Dallas Goddard out there this year. And just natural regression. Um, but in terms of price points, OJ Howard, Evan Ingram at 5000 and 4800 might have the most upside and bang for their buck. Evan Ingram being the main receiver with Saquon Barkley. And it's funny that they're neither, in their, neither of them are a receiver. In a good matchup against Dallas, I gave up 13.6 DraftKings points per game last year. Um, the worry is that Evan Ingram's offense just stinks in general, but he should be the main focal point in the receiving game. Uh, expect probably six to eight targets as a, as a natural thing to expect for Ingram, which is very good for a tight end. It's upper elite tier in terms of their usage and opportunities. OJ Howard at $5,000. The guy's a baller, played on every single snap during the preseason. Didn't get a lot of targets, but I'm not too worried about that in limited run. Again, this high-paced game against San Fran. OJ Howard is probably my favorite overall tight end. If you can fit him into your lineups, that's where I'm going to be getting to. Hunter Henry returning from a season where he did not play at all due to injury. He's only 3,900. And Delaney Walker, a season where he pretty much did not play at all after getting injured in week one of last year. Walker looked good in the preseason, caught a touchdown, a lot of raving out of camp. Obviously, this game in general um, does not look very good. Uh, you have 20 implied uh, team total for them. Cleveland is a team that has given up a lot of points to the tight end position over the years. I'd expect uh, a better defense. It started to stabilize last year. But Delaney Walker at 3,500 is hard to pass up when you have Adam Humphreys now in the middle of the field in Tennessee going to take some targets away. Seemed like there was a bit of a connection with Mar Marcus Mariota in the preseason, but Delaney Walker has been Marcus Mariota's guy. He's, he's the most targeted guy for Marcus Mariota in his career, um, outside of him obviously missing last year. Delaney Walker is a guy I get to at 3,500, and then just the secondary options are the, are the more expensive Travis Kelsey and Kittle, if you can afford it. I'm not jamming those guys in when I have OJ Howard and Evan Ingram, who should honestly see around five to eight targets, and really those eight targets mainly for Evan Ingram in an offense that has no receivers week one. Uh, I like that a lot. So if you have any interest in terms of getting any of these stat sheets, which are going to be fully done and probably by the end of the day, they're all done except for the tight end position, my target offense sheet, my tiers, uh, exclusive podcast, tiers for showdown slates as well. You can get that down below on Patreon. My NFL Daily Fantasy course is also linked down below. If you made it all the way through, hit the subscribe button. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Follow me on Twitter at DFS. This is the initial picks video for the week. I'll do my Friday final thoughts on Friday, obviously. My name's Sal. You already know that. NFL's back, baby. I got to go do a season-long draft. Peace out, gang. Hey, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. One second. Check out this page. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button, all right? And if you're interested in Patreon, if you're not already a Patreon, you can hit that button on Patreon, become a Patreon. It will take you right there. You can also check me out on Twitter, at Salvetri DFS. And hey, if you're interested, this next video that's about to pop up, why don't you check it out as well? See ya.